Hi, welcome to this episode of Lightboard Lessons, and today we're going to talk about Auto Last Hop. An Auto Last Hop is a feature that is uh, enabled by default on the Big IP, and basically what it does is it, it tracks uh, where packets come in, the source VLAN and the source MAC address, and it returns traffic to there. And so um, a, a reason why that might be valuable, if you have a cloud here and you have, say, three gateways, in your network. So gateway one, gateway two, and gateway three. And then say all three of these come down into your load balancing tier. And so this is your big IP. And then say you have a couple different networks back here where you're, uh, you have server one and server two, and they're on say VLAN 201. And then you have another network here that is server one and server two on that network, and let's say that's a VLAN uh, 202. And then up here, let's say this is VLAN 101, VLAN 201, and VLAN 301. And so in this scenario, normally you're, okay, I have to figure out my routing infrastructure, I have to figure out how to get traffic from here over to here, and then from over here over to here. Uh, with Auto Last Hop, um, in this scenario, especially if this tier, say this tier here, does no source initiation to traffic out to the, the internet. Uh, maybe you have default routes into your private infrastructure where you have a firewall, and then it does the outbound initiated connections on behalf of, of these servers so that, uh, so that you don't have any traffic initiating from this tier in your DMZ out to the cloud. So, you know, they would have um, a, a default route up here to your big IP. Um, but in this scenario, we don't really have to have any default routes from the big IP uh, because what Auto Last Hop will do is, and I'll change colors here, if I have traffic coming in here uh, to uh, virtual server one and say it's going to send traffic over here uh, to this server. Uh, the server knows how to get traffic back there, and in fact, you don't even need to have these default routes if you're using uh, SNAP auto mapping or you're using a SNAP pool. Uh, then you don't need these default routes in here at all. Uh, but then you know you lose some of the uh, network um, layer data that you might use for analytics here. So it's you know that's a toss up choice on where you want to do your analytics. Are you going to do that here or are you going to do that down here? But that's another discussion. Um, so what Big IP is building here is saying okay. Uh, that MAC address, um, and we'll just make it AAA on VLAN uh, 101. Uh, that's where uh, that particular packet came from. And so regardless of routing table, I'm going to send that traffic back there. So if I did have a route here in Big IP and say I was sending for, uh, let's say, uh, 192.168.1.1, and yes, I know that's RFC. <laughs> Well, 1918, and it's not going to route that out to the internet, but for demonstration purposes, say for that route, I'm going to I have a default route um, uh, for that network out to gateway two. If I have auto last hop enabled, it's going to ignore that routing table and it's going to send that traffic back to gateway one. This could be good or bad. It depends on what your, your policy um, is. And so it's, it's important to know that auto last hop, if if it's enabled uh, by default at a global level, uh, will ignore the routing table. And so whereas you may have wanted that traffic to go out this way, it's actually going to come this way unless you change the way that um, Auto Last Hop works. And so there's uh, some different settings for global app, uh, or for Auto Last Hop. There's, uh, you can enable it globally. And by default, it is enabled globally. Um, you can also do it on the VLAN. Now the VLAN default or the, the default setting is default, and what that'll do is it will inherit from global. And then there's SNAT, you can apply auto last hop at the SNAT and NAT level, and it will, uh, is also set to default. The other settings for all of these is, uh, is enable and disable as well. Um, but that will um, inherit from VLAN, and so if VLAN is default, then it's ultimately inheriting from global. 
And then there's the virtual server, which is also default. And it inherits from VLAN. And so if global is enabled, then all of these are going to inherit that setting if they're default. Um, but then you could disable at a global level and then change VLAN to enable. And now SNAT and virtual server are going to inherit from VLAN, but that gives you control over setting some VLANs to allow for auto last hop, but not all of them. Uh, conversely, you could you know, set global and VLAN to disable and only set SNAT and NAT at enable. And now the virtual server, because it inherits from VLAN, is not going to use auto last hop if SNAT and NAT are enabled. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but the precedence is such that if you have global enabled and these are default, they all will, um, you know, take, uh, they'll take uh, inheritance from that. But if SNAT and NAT are enabled, then it doesn't matter what the VLAN and global are setting, it's going to honor the SNAT and NAT setting. And likewise for virtual server, if it's enabled here, it doesn't really matter what VLAN or global are set at, it's going to, uh, it's going to honor um, and use the, um, the auto last hop table. So hopefully this has been a, a good uh, introduction. I'll link the solution that gives more details about, uh, there's a bunch of scenarios that they set up for how these settings are configured together. And, uh, and you can read about it there. So we'll see you out there in the community. Thanks for joining.